It's been a little while since you've seen me do a video like this, huh? And uh, I'm learning, I'm learning, see? I move my hand in front of it, the light doesn't go crazy and change. I'll put a link in the description to the video I was watching that kind of taught me a little bit about locking down some things on the camera instead of letting the camera do all the deciding for me. Right now we're on Mean Rom 4.5 Gingerbread. I do have an older H-Boot. You're going to need four files total. You're going to need the PG86 zip. You're going to need the ICS Deodex zip. That's the ICS ROM. Plus you're going to need the Super Wipe zip. And if you want to use Bluetooth, you're going to need the Bluetooth Fix zip. All of those links will be in the description. I'll link you to the threads that I got them from. And I'll also link to mirrors in case those links are down. Huge shout out to MPGram2, I believe. I will put his name on the screen. He has been helping me out a lot with this. Like, a lot. And I super appreciate him. I'm really happy with the results so far. The screen looks pretty good. Turn off auto brightness. I'm obviously going to learn. I'm controlling my entire camera with my SGS3. You can change the aperture, which I don't know which ones to choose. For the ISO, I chose 800 because any of these made the video look really bright. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And any of the other ones make it really dark. And I don't know what this shutter stuff is. So, bear with me as I experiment and learn. But I'm pretty excited about that. The video doesn't go dark anymore. So once you have the four files in your SD card, the PG86 zip is going to want to, your phone is going to want to install that. So make sure that you delete that after you update the firmware. I'm going to reboot it manually to bootloader. One thing that I have noticed is that you cannot have it charging while you do this. Volume down and power. Doesn't always work, right? So in this situation, pull the battery. We will try that again. Volume down and power. Sweet. It's checking to see if we have that PG86100 zip in the root directory, and we do. And I need to adjust something because you can't read that. Well, obviously I'm not going to make the video look much better, but you do have to update your H boot. You have to, to install an official ice cream sandwich ROM. If you're installing CyanogenMod 10 or CyanogenMod 9, you have to have H1.4 or below. You might be able to use 1.5, but you cannot use the very latest. If you have S off like I do, it's easy to revert back. Just get the ENG H boot. I'll try to find a link to that and put it in the description of this video as well. And do like you're doing now. It will change your H boot to the ENG H boot that has fast boot commands. We have S off. And at the top, it's going to say locked, but we are still S on from what I've been told multiple times. At this point, you're just going to press volume up. And it's going to update all of these things. If you're S off, you can easily downgrade your H boot. If you're S on, you can't do that, as far as I know. Oh, uh, now I got to turn a freaking. White balance or ISO. Oh no, I don't. Probably should have a really good battery when you do this. As you saw, mine was pretty low. All right, now we're going to press power. It may or may not reboot into the ROM. If it does reboot to the ROM, we will simply delete that PG86100 zip. Okay, so no, it's not going to boot. We need to pull the battery. I have a little full-size USB thing that you can stick this in, and I also have a micro SD to full-size SD adapter. I'm going to go delete that PJ86100 zip, otherwise when we press volume down and power to get into bootloader to get to recovery, it's going to keep asking us to install the new stuff that we just did. I'll be right back.
All right, that is done. This is what I was talking about. I did a video probably about a year ago of the 32 gig micro SD card that I currently use on my SGS3. I bought it for my Evo 3D because the stock 8 gig was full. Then I put it in my Evo 4 Gel to E. Now I have it in my Samsung Galaxy S3. This is what I actually use this time. Just take this, you put it in there, put that inside your computer, it's a full size USB. Pretty convenient. I deleted that PJ86 image. I've been saying it wrong. So now when I try to reboot to bootloader, it'll actually let me get into recovery. This phone is still activatable, and when I go to an area that doesn't have LTE, I activate this phone. I simply will not use 3G. I was getting like 34, 35 megabits down and 13 up today on my phone and my wife's Galaxy Nexus. Oh, you can't have power to get into bootloader. Wait for the light to go away, hold volume down in power, and you should see at the top, it says locked, but we're still S off. I will change the ISO here in a second. S off, shooter, locked, etc. Now we can press down, get to recovery. We have the latest twerp recovery, and in a minute here, I will show you the latest version, 2220. It's the latest as of making this video. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can go to Flash Image GUI, choose a second option, which is recovery, browse for the 2220 image file, and press Flash. Or you can use Goo Manager, press Menu, and then install OpenScript Recovery, and it will automatically download and install the latest 2220 twerp recovery. If you don't want to use Goo Manager, I will have a link in the description of this video where you can go to the official download page and download it and then use Flash Image GUI to flash it. Or, like I say, you can just use Goo Manager and you don't have to download anything. It'll automatically download it for you. It's also recommended that you back up your current ROM if you want to, which I actually did a factory reset, so it's completely stock. Well, it's not stock. It has Mean ROM 4.5 on it, which is gingerbread based. Keep in mind, with Twerp Recovery, you can charge your device while you're in recovery. So we have a low battery. It will be charging while we're doing all this. Press install. The first thing you want to do is the super wipe. Press add more zips, then choose the ICS Diodex zip, then press add more zips, and choose the Bluetooth fix. You want all three of those files to flash, and then you'll just swipe to confirm flash. See it says flashing file one of three. This will take a minute. Please pay attention to the clock at the top left of the screen, and also notice that the battery will be charging while this is installing. I hope the quality of the video isn't too bad. It's a little bit hard to tell on this screen how it's going to actually come out and look. MP Grimm states that there is a way to get USB OTG, which is this little adapter I'm using right here. That's plugging into my phone and going to my USB port of my camera. You can hook up a mouse, keyboard, flash drive with the Galaxy Nexus and the other devices that support it, like the Nexus 7. You can actually do an Android backup with Torp Recovery and store that backup on your SD card. So you're not using up your precious internal space, or say you're using a device and it has only internal memory and you're installing a ROM and that ROM wipes the internal memory for whatever reason, by accidental or on purpose. Your Torp Recovery backups will be on your external flash drive or you know, if you have this hooked up to the micro USB adapter. This is what I was talking about. Here's my second one that I really like. Just put this in there, put your micro SD card in there, and you can back up your Galaxy Nexus or your Nexus 7 or any other device that supports it onto a micro SD card. All right, the install is done. At this point, we should be just fine rebooting to system. Let's see what happens. Again, I'm sorry about the quality of the video. I got sick of the brightness changing real crazy and it trying to focus and stuff. I just, it's locked. It's the light's not going to change. All right, so it looks like we're booting into a stock ROM right now. Keep in mind, you can downgrade your HBoot, like I've said multiple times, but the ROM will not boot. If you downgrade your HBoot, you will have to go back to a gingerbread ROM or to Sanjumon 9 or Sanjumon 10. If you have S on, there is a way to get S off using a wire trick, and I'll post a link in the description to Zetomax's video showing how to do it. You just need the Junipair, Junipo Bear, or something like that. It's a special HBoot for S on people that went S off using the wire trick. 
you still have to use the HTC Dev Unlock and void your warranty with HTC. You still gotta do that if you updated to 1.50 with the 2.3.4 update or if you bought your Evo 3D after the 2.3.4 update. I'm getting a new mic soon. I've been saying that a million times. I won a pretty awesome, pretty big gift card and I'm just waiting on it to come and I'll have a little microphone thing that goes to my camera. I'm thinking about getting a wireless one, They're like 300 bucks, but I... <laughs> I need really good audio. I don't like the built-in sound. It picks up everything. Plus, it'd be cool to have a little mic on my shirt and I talk into it like this and, you know, y'all hear me nice and clear, but it won't capture the sound of my phone unless I have one that's mounted on top and it doesn't look like it's booting up. What the hell's going on? Should I give it a minute? Hmm. I do know. The first boot up can take a while. I know it takes longer with most ROMs. It just sucks. There's no kind of indication on whether it's progressing or not. As you might have saw earlier, it kept rebooting, vibrating and rebooting, vibrating and rebooting. It's not doing that, so I don't know. This is my first time doing this. More videos of this device will come. I'll downgrade the H boot, install signs in Montana, etc. Go to an ENG H boot. They're vibrating. Oh, okay. I didn't turn it off. Luckily, I did not turn it off. I was about to. I got sick and I was <laughs> getting a little bit impatient. Check it out. It's first starting up. Of course, there's no service on it. Automatic sync. Connect to my Wi-Fi. I use SwiftKey, so y'all will have to tell me whether this looks a little bit different than the stock HTC keyboard. I only see it for a brief moment. Sign into Wi-Fi, log in to my Google Play account, download SwiftKey. Or actually, I downloaded the Tinian backup, and then I restore SwiftKey. No. No, 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 no. Don't allow. Decline. I'm half tempted to activate this and use it to like let y'all know how the battery is and etc. But honestly. I'm getting like 34, 35 megabit down and like 13 up on my Samsung Galaxy S3. I got 38 on my Evo 4 GLTE and I've gotten 38 on the Galaxy Nexus. So going to WiMAX would be a downgrade. I don't want that to happen at all. I'll use it like when I'm connected to Wi-Fi and stuff. So, All right, so instead of having a little like phone, customize, and app drawer, you actually get these. And if it's anything like the Evo 4 GLTE, if you take this and like you replace it with like voicemail or Play Store, and then when you unlock it, yeah, Play Store. Accept, decline, allow, deny, all stuff's to the right. That's something that ICS changed, and of course Jelly Bean continues with that. Let's see how they obtain root in this thing. Oh, you don't go left and right, you go up and down. My bad. Super SU. I'm starting to really like Super SU. With Evo 4 GLTE, people kept including that instead of Super User. And in fact, the first ROM I saw in the Evo 4 GLTE that used Super User instead of Super SU was Your Evo by Close One, which is the lightest ROM out there available for the Evo 4 GLTE. So I really like Super SU. I have no problems with it at all. At first, it was a little uncomfortable going from Super User to Super SU, but after a while, it's just something you get used to. comes with stock stuff, Spider-Man, etc. Then you get your frequent and you're downloaded. If you hold down the power button, you just get restart and power off, drag down the notification bar, you get quick settings. Connected to the Wi-Fi, mobile network, turn that off since there's no service on this thing. 4G, Bluetooth, airplane mode, total memory, free memory, and then you get these shortcuts at the top here, which I don't like at all. I'm glad that Mean Rom removed those. And that's another thing, since you now have Ice Cream Sandwich, you can install awesome apps like Google Chrome. Ooh, SwiftKey. It's so awesome that all the OKs and allow and accept, everything's to the right. I'm so used to that. Because like every single device I have is at least on ice cream sandwich. This was the last remaining device with gingerbread on it. I like to change the theme to pumpkin. 
and then have little arrows. So when you're trying to like fine tune and navigate to a certain area, like Twitter, sign in, which I recommend Plume. There's that, and there's the, like if you do this, and you're trying to get in between those letters right there, you're like, uh, uh, uh. You just press the little arrows. So, yeah, I love SwiftKey. That's about it. Obviously, I haven't really played with the ROM, but there's how you update your HBoot to the latest version. Maintain as off. Update your radios and everything. And get a Deodexed ice cream sandwich stock ROM. It's completely stock. And then you can go to the Google Play Store and download apps like Titanium Backup. And there's my video on how to use it. I also have a separate video for the pro version, and I have an even newer version that's linked inside both of those videos. Clear all our notifications. See, I don't like that. They're all up there the entire time. Obviously, there's a crap ton of other apps in there, but you'll open up the Tinea Backup. You go to the Backup tab, click Edit Filters, and then start typing in the first couple letters, like SP for Spider-Man, and then press the checkbox, and it'll go through and sort all the apps that start with SP and system apps and settings and etc. In fact, I'll stop them. Install just this one. And when you open it, grant or allow will be on the right. Press OK. It'll probably warn me that ADB debugging needs to be enabled and unknown sources needs to be checked. Go to those, just press settings. And you'll notice that this is completely different as well. Like under power, we'll show you your battery. Disable fast boot. Developer options. USB debugging is enabled by default. Sweet. Under security. Unknown sources. Allow. And then if you hold down the home button, this is awesome because on the Evil Forge LTE, they decided to go with their little Sense 4.0 or and now 4.1, which I did a video on, and you flip everything up. And on here, you just slide it to the side like normal ice cream sandwich. Awesome. And then press menu. Reload application. Sweet. Back up and restore. Dismiss. Click edit filters. SPI. Check. And you'll notice that Spider-Man is red, meaning it's a system app. Normally you can't uninstall it, but since you have to turn it back up, you can just press on it. Press uninstall. It's going to let you know that it's a system app and you don't have a backup available. Just press yes. Now if you go to your app drawer, no more Spider-Man. And of course you can do that with all your other apps as well that you don't want on there. Like Twitter and Polaris Office and Quick Video. And a stock Twitter since I'll use Plume. 3D games, Blockbuster, all those things you can remove with the Tinian backup. And if you have a lot of apps, you'll definitely want to use filters and search for just the first couple letters. And in that case, a three, and then remove it. If this video helped you out, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. My name is Josh. My username stands for What Would Josh Do? If you're new to my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It'll notify you when I post new videos. Sometimes YouTube sub boxes are broken. If you always want to stay up to date, hover above that little box that says subscribed and check the box that says also email for upload. I will only upload high quality content that I worked really hard on. It'll be very rarely that I upload a non-edited video. I have a second channel where I post videos from my phone, more of like a vlog, stuff that I don't think quite needs to be on my main channel. And also, if you follow me on Twitter, a tweet will automatically get posted every time I upload a new video, add a video to a playlist, anytime I favorite a video. I favorite a video basically so I can come back to it later on and watch it, and so it'll tweet, and people will see the video that I just favorited, and then they can go check it out if they want to. See? There's Chrome. And then you can install it, and then once you install it, you can sign into your Chrome account that you use on your computer, and all your history, bookmarks, passwords, everything will be on your phone and in sync with your computer's browser. Again, if you like this video, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like the video. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, again, please subscribe. This is What Would Josh Do, and I'm out.